Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello! My name's Jewel Jagambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about mono and stereo sounds, a very large and what can be quite confusing topic. Today we're going to have a look at how to record in each format and how to turn a stereo track into a mono track and vice versa. So if you want to find out a bit more about this, make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kiss me in the rain. A mono track is a single channel audio track where the left and right channels, or the left and right outputs, have the exact same audio recorded to them. A stereo track is a two-channel audio track, where the left and right channels have different audio recorded to them. In general, a stereo track tends to give us a wider, thicker feel, and we can create more interest in stereo using panning. Normally we would record in mono when we have a single sound source, for example, a singular vocal, or a di'd bass, or a di'd guitar, as this gives us the most natural representation of the sound. We'd record in stereo when we have a stereo pair of microphones, or want to portray a larger stereo spread, for example, perhaps when you're recording a choir, or an acoustic guitar, or a piano. However, we can run into problems with phasing during the mixing stage when we're recording in stereo, so we do need to be really careful about that. There are different ways that we can record that will give us a stereo recording. This first way is probably the way that I'd say is the easiest. It's for when you have a stereo pair of microphones or a stereo output on your instrument already. You need a stereo input on your audio interface and you simply plug your instrument in. Then all we need to do is create a stereo track in our DAW and press record, which we're going to have a look at how to do now. In Logic, we create a stereo track by simply changing the audio input to input one and two when creating the track. If you have an existing track, you go over to the channel strip and click where the single circle is and you will see it change to an intertwined circles and the input will automatically change to input one and two. This will then mean that the DAW will record different audio information in the left and right channels from your two inputs. The next way we can get a stereo recording is for if you don't have a stereo input on your audio interface. This isn't a problem, we can use multi-track recording instead. All you need to do is plug in both instruments or both outputs from your instrument into two separate channels on your interface. Then you pan one channel hard left and the other hard right. You then create a stereo track in your DAW like before and you'll get your stereo recording. This last way is kind of a final resort to get a stereo recording. It's for when you don't have a stereo input on your audio interface, you can't use multi-track recording, or perhaps you can't even record to a stereo track in your DAW. All you need to do is to record two separate mono tracks, and then after, in the mixing process, you can pan one of these mono tracks hard left and the other of the mono tracks hard right, and you'll get a stereo sounding recording. So to make a track mono in your DAW before you record, you do the exact same things as creating a stereo track, but instead of using input 1 and 2, you choose input 1. If you've accidentally recorded a mono signal to a stereo track, you'll see that one line has audio information and the other is completely flat, and it'll look a bit like this. This means that you'll only hear audio coming out of one of your speakers, which is a nightmare. But don't worry, we can fix this, and I'll show you how. There are two main reasons that you may want to split an already recorded stereo track. Number one, as mentioned earlier, if you've accidentally recorded a mono source into a stereo track. And number two, if there's a sound that you want to edit in just one of the outputs, either the left hand side or the right hand side, without affecting the other side. So let's have a look at how to do it. In Logic, the way we do this is fairly easy. We go to the stereo track and right click on it. We then select convert from the menu and convert to new audio file. You then get a menu like this appear and we want to focus on the stereo conversion part. Choose interleaved into split and two separate audio tracks will be created. We then need to make sure that we rename these audio tracks. 
I tend to simply replace the L with the whole word left, so that I know that this is the left channel audio. After you've renamed these, you can then reinsert them into your project and you will have two separate mono tracks, and that's how you do it. So unfortunately, there is no way to turn a track that's been recorded in mono into a stereo recording. And this is because both the left and right channels have the exact same audio information on them. But luckily for us, there are ways that we can make a mono track sound a bit more stereo using three different techniques. The first way we can create a stereo sound is if we double the mono track. We can then pan these doubles hard left and hard right, which will give us a wider sound. Here's an example of the single mono track and then the panned stereo track. It definitely gives us a thicker and stronger sound. The second way would be to use a stereo spreader plugin. Essentially, this plugin splits the frequencies in your tracks into separate bands and evenly distributes these bands between the left and right channels. Here's a mono track with and without the stereo spreader. As you can hear, the track definitely sounds wider and more spread out. The third way is to use a stereo delay. This will obviously add a delay effect to your sound, which you may not want, but it will give us a more stereo sound. I've made a video about different types of delays, which I'll link to in the description. Here's the track with and without the stereo delay. It sounds so much thicker and wider, but as I mentioned, the delay can definitely be heard, which may not be desired, so you may choose to use another of the techniques. So that's the basics of mono and stereo sound. I really like the fact that we have so many different choices on how to record in mono and stereo, and that we have the capability to convert from one to the other. It just gives us so many options and really covers our backs in case we record in the wrong format. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.